And welcome to the risk working group meeting on November 19th, 2020. We're going to open the discussion with a conversation about Libiers. David. Okay. All right, so in the last couple of meetings, there have been discussions about the problems of old dependencies. Uh, I am particularly interested in them because of their security impacts, because, you know, if you have really old dependencies, they're more likely to have vulnerabilities. But, you know, people are interested in them for other reasons, like, you know, maintenance, sustainability, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been poking around a little bit, and I did find... Um, uh, a, a metric, well, in fact, a, a metric and another metric they don't mention, but I think should be um, called a lib year. So a lib year is a very, very simple way to measure how fresh something is. So um, uh, so let me just kind of verbally explain it because it really isn't complicated. Um, if the current, if, if the version of the software that you're using, of, of some library they're using is current, then it has a lib year of zero. But let's say that the version you're using is one year older than the version that you, quote, should be using. Well, then that that library contributes one lib year. It's basically how much older is the is each library compared to the library that you, version that you're supposed to be using. Is this cumulative based on yes. dependency? Wow. That's, that's right. So this what you do is you look at all your transitive, not just direct, but all your transitive dependencies and you add them up so you can be like a thousand lib years old really fast absolutely now that's actually one of the problems with lib years so one of the so in fact there's a web page thank you very much libyear.com where they pitch this and it turns out a lot of people measure this uh there is a tool there are simple tools to do this in ruby uh called libyear bundler i've actually used it um remark yeah Remarkably simple tool. It does what it says on the tin. It shows what, what, what that one does. And I think many of them do is they list everyone that's behind how many lib years for each, then mm -hmm. adds them up. Now, the only problem with this now, no metric is perfect. Okay. But one obvious, and, and there's a citation here, which uh, I've actually briefly interacted with these folks. Uh, unfortunately, the guy who led that's no longer doing this sort of thing. It was his master's thesis. He got his master's. Now he's off to another stuff. Right. Uh, but I did contact them briefly. What's the problem? Yeah, go. Um, so what tool is he using to basically go and track the dependencies through here? Is it like, you know, dependency check or something else? Or what's, what's, no. what's just? No, in, the, in this case, it's purely the dependencies from that given package manager. So okay, for so example. Things like libraries, like time and so forth, wouldn't show up on this type of thing. Uh, well, okay, that depends. Well, the answer is it depends. Okay. <laughs> sure. If it, if it is being brought in by the package manager, then the answer is yes, even okay. if it's transitive. If it's not being brought in by the, by the package manager for whom it's using its data. So for example, let's say you're using an old version of a standard library. Right. But it's part okay. Then uh, I I think most of these tools would not include that. Okay. Um, okay. Now that doesn't mean that you can't conceptually include it. It's just many of these tools only work off a particular repo. But you you know what? Um, you know, right now I'm just looking at this more generally. So the okay. problem one of the problems with these though is that larger projects just automatically are going to have more lib years because if you add them up, if there's a thousand dependencies. I mean, that's, it, it, I think in some ways this grossly penalizes projects. So I um, I looked at this and said, that's an interesting idea, but why are they measuring the total? That's kind of silly. Why don't they report the average? Because uh, all you have to do is take lib year, divide it by the number of components. Now you have an average lib year. Um, I mentioned this to the Ruby bundler of uh, the lib year bundler folks, which do the, a Ruby implementation. And they said, yeah, that's easy. I mean, they already have to count. They already have to identify the components. They already have to total up lib years. That's the hard part. You know, divide A by B. <laughs> that's easy. So, um, uh, and I actually did this for um, uh, one of my projects, and uh, it, it actually helped me find immediately some things that were older than uh, I was expecting, and uh, I managed to improve it. Now, I'm not advocating that this is necessarily for you know chaos to include 
But I am saying that this is one and one of the easiest metrics I've seen that might be useful if somebody does some studying first to see how useful this is. I mean, I, I did it for one. Google measured it for one. They came up with some interest. You know, we both came up with some interesting numbers. But I think this is the sort of thing where you want to do it across many different projects before raising it up as this might be a really useful measure. But so. Uh Interestingly, that's, that's, that, and that's what I and that's what I wanted to share with everybody. So that's 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 interesting. While you did that, I went and looked at Piprot, which is listed on this Pipier website for Augur, and I said Piprot, and then had it look at Augur, follow the directions. Looks like you've been keeping up to date. Time for a delicious beverage. <laughs> <laughs> so does Piprot measure? The, uh, I don't. I don't know, but these are metrics I can believe in. Um, <laughs> metrics, metrics that say I could just like get ready for a delicious beverage are, are like I don't know. That's that's uh, yeah, way I, better I, than a number. Yeah, I, I, I per personally, what that's telling me is that you're easily bribed. So uh. yeah, fair, fair, true story and fair. Um, uh, but yeah, I would be interested in. But, but I, I think. You know, the last two meetings have been, how do you measure this stuff? And I've also brought this up briefly with mm -hmm. the, with uh, some folks in, an, in an, uh, the open SSF metrics group. Um, and that's where uh, one of the Googlers actually measured lib years on their project and, and calculated out some things. Um, so, you know, this doesn't mean it's the be all end all, but yeah. found this. Clearly um, there are different I, implementations with, with Piprot giving me just authorization for a beverage right off the bat uh, <laughs> well but I, but I think I think we need to find out what it's measuring really and mm -hmm. I don't and I shouldn't be that hard right I assume it's open source I, I assume as well um, I mean back to Olivia I was gonna say I, oh, like, I like the average comment because I feel like that versus a total um, I think it helps to normalize it a bit but mm -hmm. then if you're also taking an average then you can also look at the Olivia per component. So if it's a huge project like Kubernetes, having one number doesn't really make sense. You no. probably want, you want that number for all of the sub projects. Right. Uh, so like, and then, then the average becomes the standard number across all of them. So there's your average. And then within each component, you have the average of those components. And then you have general relative freshness or however, whatever your word you want to use. Um, as a metric that you can aggregate at both the low and high level. And then when you have it at the low level, then it is very actionable. Um, and then the top level, it's an overall risk metric. So I, I kind of like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, doing it by that transitive closure and following through might, I'd have to think through that because there's some complications when you do that mathematically. Um, but I, I will say, you, you mentioned, hey, drill down, um, as well as just, hey, I, do a count. I then said, hey, give me a sort. Show me the worst ones, you know, in, in order. And mm -hmm. that was helpful because- uh, Ruby, The out, Ruby library logged that, I take it? Uh, yeah, the Libya bundler was what I okay. used. But, uh, but you know, in order to calculate this, all of those have, I mean, I don't know if they can show them, but all of them have to be able to do that because they have to calculate for each one, you know, how old each one is. Mm -hmm. And having a report of, tell me the oldest ones in reverse order, as well as a total and an average, I, I think would be useful. And maybe the, um, you know, maybe by grouping it by transitive closure might also be interesting, but I, th I think that would be more complicated. We have to figure out, you know, what are the weights and measures and does that make sense? What, what are the weights when you, when you combine them that way? And I don't know how much that makes sense, but I will say that looking at it in reverse order just the direct ones was definitely useful because in fact, there was one that I was surprised that hadn't been updated and it was due to some quirkiness <laughs> that once I resolved, I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't just, Hey, update. I had to make some changes, but it was worth changing because wow, that is causing a tremendous effect. Mm -hmm. So I have posted a link uh, in the chat, which has an example mm -hmm. of it in terms of like, okay, library, current version, latest version, and the lib here. Mm -hmm. If right. you can uh, click that and uh, in there, they are calculating the lib here, but I'm trying to understand how they are calculating. It's just a version, like different versions. Is there any date option? Yeah. Can you scroll down a little bit? 
moment. Yep. yep. Yeah. This there is you the, go. Yeah. So this is interesting because um, some of the more contemporary ways of using Python have the requirements embedded in a setup file. Um, so All right, yeah, there's several different ways to do it. Yeah, but yes, yeah. there's several ways in Python to lock to a particular version instead of just. Yeah, uh, requirements.txt is like a common way. Um, so is this considering like subversioning also? For example, like I have a version, but I have a sub version too, which is released like maybe a year gap or a two year gap or within like the same year, three versions, sub versions. Okay. Well, all right. Sub by sub versions, do you mean multiple versions? Is it like, like, so 1. It's like 1, 1. 1.2, 1. 1.3? 1. Version 1.1, 1. 1, right. version 1. 1.2, version 1.3, then again, version 2.1, 2.2. 2. 2. So sub versioning is like part of that. Yeah. Thing. Okay, yeah, you have to be careful because that word subversion has many meanings. And okay. I'm coming from the, I'm coming it's from a pre get world. version control system. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, that too. Um, used it many years. Um, so um, if you look at the paper on, on from Libier on the on the Libier.com site, um, they actually, if, if you if you read the paper by Cox et al, uh, they actually measure freshness in multiple ways. Um, including one, uh, two that use versions as the metric. Um, and in fact, several of these tools also do versions. The problem with the versions metric is that assumes that version numbers have the same meaning for everybody. And um, I think in some communities that's almost true because they, they prefer Semver, but I think that that's kind of dubious I, I, I frankly, I, I'm not convinced um, because version one and version two, uh, some, you know, if you follow Semver, every time an API changes, you're supposed to update the major version, but that mm -hmm. major version change may have very little to do with being updated. And, you know, so it's not clear that, that paying attention to version numbers really makes much sense. Whereas the dates, I mean, the advantage is at this particular date, I can't update any sooner than today. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so there is, so there is a reason why a particular date has a real meaning. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so if you go to that paper, a, a monkey wrench in the in the version argument too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been some research around average release stability. So having the latest isn't always the most stable. So if we're talking about this as a potential factor of risk and stability within your code, having the latest version of something isn't always an indication that it's the most stable. Reliable. Yeah. yeah, and often the latest version is not the most reliable. So right. it's like, it, like there's like, there has to be a buffer because you don't want to be too old because then it's totally unsupported, but then you don't want to be too new because then it's potentially untested. Blood up. Yeah, blood right. on the floor, like downloading Big Sur and installing it. Yeah, now the paper that the paper that cited down there, they do mention a little bit of it, and there's a quirk, well, I don't know quirkiness. Uh, they did think about this one at least. What they say is you should measure it from the version you should be at, which is carefully mm -hmm. not defined to say the most recent version. It's the version yes. you should be at. Um, and but the problem, of course, is when you're doing this in an automated way. You know, how the heck would you distinguish between those two cases? And and I will say that I, I think in reality, there is interview uh, data in this study. I'm scanning it in another window. Yeah, so it's I, not I, as I, though it's all di just like digital trace data. They're they're actually like talk to people about what they think yeah. is is important. Yeah, I, I will say that as soon as you maintain anything for a couple of years, uh, worrying about, oh, my gosh, I, I'm using stuff that's too new is probably not your problem. <laughs> yeah maybe look at it from the semantic versioning perspective like add this to this section okay to remove that ambiguity yeah i mean if, if you remove a functionality um it may change a whole new sem version sem verb but if you weren't using that functionality anyway it it's it's a non-event right so so, I, so I, I have to admit, I mean, they prefer the, this version numbers, and I, I, I just leave the paper 
I mean, I think they've got some interesting ideas, but the version number emphasis, I think, just leaves me totally unconvinced. Um, it's a uh, it's a metric, right? It's like it's a metric. It's true. It's a metric. Absent the metric, it's you just are making stuff up, right? Like it's at least consistent. Like I can compare using the same measurement. I can compare firm A and firm B or project A and B, um, even if it's flawed. Right, but but then you have to ask, what am I doing this for? They're they're coding and, with love, David. Love. Oh well, love. How can you uh, be so, against love? See, I went to the it, website. They're coding with love. Yeah. So so in the context of this working group, presumably the point is trying to measure risk, mm -hmm. and I'm not convinced that measuring off version numbers is a very good way to measure risk. Right. But measuring right. how old. Yeah. You know. Hey. Yeah. You, you know. Everything's mm -hmm. five years old on average. Right. That may that would make me very worried, and I think you can make a really good argument <laughs> that that's. Uh, I think a lot of the, a lot of the met. Go ahead, Kate. It only makes me worried if there's a more recent version. Right, and that's, and that's if, what if, this like does. Said, if there's something five years old and there's been no updates to it and it's perfectly fine, because yep. nothing's been no bugs been found or anything else. Yeah, but by, yeah. by this metric, if it's five years old, but that's the latest release it's fine. It will give you zero. So it's Libyear off of the latest release. Libyear is just how old is it compared to the latest release? Okay. If the latest fine. release is old. Yeah. It's a non issue. It's an, now you could make a case that maybe if all your latest releases are five years old, it might be worth checking, but this is not a metric to help you find that. So there are different perspectives to take. Yes. On Libier. Yeah. But well, they're on the value of Libyear, but it, I think at the very least, this is worth investigating. And what I'd love to see is, you know, some measurements to help determine whether or not this is a good or bad thing. Uh, so I'll make a, a comment here. So I, I like this, I like the discussion here. And I think it's important to keep in mind that a lot of the metrics that we develop here in the chaos project, they're not, they're value free in the sense that we don't say, oh, a, a, a high number is good or a low number is good. We're just developing the metrics often to try to locate people into something that they should be looking at. Um, and it often requires more investigation by a person to, to their local context. So in the case of what say Sophia or Kate was talking about, that um, the, the, the with respect to the newest version. So you may have low lib years, um, but that would be something that is particularly relevant to them mm -hmm. um, versus a lib year of right, 10,000. And to your point, David, earlier, like if you have a thousand dependencies, like sure, like a, a non-averaged lib year is gonna be crazy high. Right, which is why I think investigating lib year and average lib year would be important. So I would say lib yeah. year and average lib year uh, don't rehearse the notes here. Uh, I've been jotting things down. So I, th I think e in either case, whatever is positive or negative might be locally construed. It might have local context to it, um, but the Libier metric could be useful just in the sense of getting people located to think about their relationship to, to the age of, of the dependencies or the versions of the dependencies that they're working with. I think that's super cool. Okay, so anyway, um... You know, we've been discussing a topic. I found something that might be relevant <laughs> to the topic. So, so on that note too, if you look at Sean is in the minutes. Um, yeah. If you go to the top of page two, Sean. Yes. So we had kind of this conversation about dependencies that I track, pulled out from I don't even know where. Matt surgical. Matt performed a, sur a surgical tactical maneuver. I'm just trying. I'm trying to. If we want to move like the dependencies, Jason, like the Jason Bourne of open source software metrics that he is. Well, maybe, maybe if dependency, so this is the list here, this A, B, C, D, and then yeah. one, two, this is not mine. This is a list that came up from some time ago. Yeah. And so we, at the moment we have. This is a nice synopsis of things we've talked about in the last three or this four months. This was from the, I think, evolution or uh, other working group where we defined like what infrastructure dependency, package dependencies, and all mm. these things that um, came up from that discussion, I recall. But I think the census methodology and build versus runtime comes from this 
working group. Yeah. So, so Matt has synthesized a few things very nicely. Uh, I didn't do anything. I copy and pasted. <laughs> <laughs> From where? It was in a, it was sitting From in a our dependent. Meds? It was, no, it was sitting in a dependency metric. Oh. I went, I went and started looking through the dependency metrics and this was actually sitting oh. in one of them. I was like, that's handy. Yeah. So my guess is that we had talked about building dependency metrics and we were trying to capture the conversation. We just put it somewhere. So here it is. Um, and so we do have one metric that is proposed, which is the number of dependencies. So that would be the A. I don't know if this is a useful metric. Is this metric. transitive or, or, or is this also include transitive or? Uh... It, it only includes what I have pasted right there. So it, it didn't make that differentiation. Tra David. Transitive would be if I, how far do I go down the, the graph of dependencies? Yeah. Right. Is that right, David? Um, That's right, both just direct yeah. dependencies and um, also there's the, and uh, yeah. all cool. including transitive dependencies. Okay. And so that would be perhaps one metric that we could bring forward, which is just kind of the volume of dependencies. Just and how many dependencies is that? I, I'm just, I'm offering this. Is yeah. that something that people care about? Yes. Sir. We need to see the volume. And I think, okay. I think the transitive dependencies are, I wonder if they're a separate metric because if you go transitive, you have to go all the way, right? You can't like decide to stop navigating the graph at some point you have to go all the way down the graph otherwise your decision to stop navigating the graph is sort of arbitrary right sure mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be that difficult you know package managers have to do this all the time yeah that's, kind of a, that, that's the reason to be right okay and, and then, it, the, you oh, could sorry. argue the i'm sorry you can say the transitive ones in many ways are the real problem I've heard that before in this group, so I, I tend to believe it. Well, and it could be a filter that's on that metric, which is show me the volume of direct dependencies, show me the volume of transitive dependencies. Is that something that's easy enough to filter through? Mm -hmm. if, if volume is a, a hope here, mm -hmm. or is that not? I have to admit, I'm not sure I would care about the direct dependencies. You know, I if, would. I, if, if there's only five or six, does that really matter? It's the transitive ones in my mind that really matter. It's, it's all include. It's all including the transitive dependencies because it's super easy to convert all your dependencies into one dependency. But you know, if I, I depend on ten. I, I depend I'm, on ten. Oh, sorry, go ahead. A good example of that is if I'm using Node.js, I have near. It seems to me nearly infinite transitive dependencies these days, where libraries depend on libraries depend on libraries. And, and so there are some ecosystems that have a lot of transitive dependencies, and there are others that have fewer. Sure. Um, but note, like I would use Node not as a just as an example of a, of a dependency that, for example, Augur has that on the front end, which is it seems to be just this infinite well that we can navigate down. But I think it's more of a context dependent. For me, maybe a direct dependency is important. Uh, as compared to transitive, but for someone transitive is more important as compared to direct dependency. So it's like uh, What's very the much? application. Sure. I, I'm trying to think of when you would care, though, because depend the direct dependencies, it's trivial to turn any set into one. I create a new package. It brings in the, all the other dependencies. I now depend on only one thing. Right, right. If nothing else, it's super easy to gain. I think it's more easy to game, but I think most people don't bother gaming it. And so in the sense that understanding how many direct dependencies you actually have um, is useful for a fan out perspective. And I'm thinking of a container example. All the, like I say, all the stuff in the layer is a potential dependency at that layer, which is again, you're direct, I guess, but yeah, I think the bigger... there's, there's some uh, like I say I'm, I'm sort of like yeah so your definition of indirect means it something else is you know one level down or two levels down is that what you mean by indirect or do you mean by um something that is selectively called at some per some points in time but not always up? so basically it's um bound I think I want I think I'm, I'm looking for a definition of direct indirect dependency what direct definition are you yeah. using 
Yeah, who, who said indirect? Because I only see transitive in the, uh, Tra okay. the text. I thought we. I heard indirect, so maybe I'm. I, maybe well, I'm not so, right. Just so indir indirect and transitive, I think, are the same thing. Same. I think in yeah. both cases yeah, we're talking. Thing. We're talking about. I have imported the library, and that library has these other dependencies, and then okay. those other dependencies have some other. Some of them have additional dependencies. Just some of those additional dependencies have fourth generation right. Yeah. dependencies, right? Yeah. Right. Turtles right. all the way down. Um, Turtles all the way down, yes. Yeah, and it's especially common in JavaScript because in JavaScript, you, you know, with something like almost half of them are zero or one functions. So you have very, very tiny libraries doing very small things in many cases. So the second, this the, is a really nice breakdown. Like I would just so, like stop and say, this is a really nice this this dependency thing. Each of these four things could be part of metrics or a metric. I think so. I'm kind of looking at them at least as a metric by themselves. And then honestly, mm -hmm. based on what David, what you brought forward today with libears, with respect to B right there on the version dependencies, right. I think that's really kind of addressing. Maybe not as perfectly as you mentioned, nothing is perfect, but it begins to kind of unpack this version issue with respect to dependencies. Yeah, if I, if I can, oh, I, I think the first one is number of dependencies. No problem. Then you've got age. Yeah, how many are there? Okay. How old are they? <laughs> yep, perfect. Right. Okay. Now that now I, I'm not sure C and D are, are fitting yet, but at least there are distinctions. Um, this is this is process, right? The so it's a decision to walk the whole dependency tree all the way down. So you're gonna you get to the last turtle, basically, and counting those an account of those dependencies, like how many dependencies are there. So that's that sounds like the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first one, part four, yeah. you can decide mm -hmm. how how mm -hmm. down the road you want to go in the dependency tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's there's actually several questions there. For example, are, do you want to go across languages? I think that would be a uh, differentiator. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's part, I think that's really under A, though. So, I mean, you know, are you going cross lang you know, cross language, e.g., down to system packages, you know, Docker images, or just within one ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Could you? Ex I'm sorry, David. Could you explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, well, let me point out the libears as just an example because I think that's useful. Um, you'll notice most of those tools are language specific, and it's not a mystery how they work. Um, the uh, the piprot one. Uh, Offered I me would, a beverage. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> I okay. I haven't looked at its code, but I would. I would bet money that it only looks at Python. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it's a Python. It's a pip, it's a pip install library. So yes, it only looks at Python. It does not right. look at my node uh, stuff at all. I would guess. Right. I I can assure you that the Ruby one only looks at Ruby. It's looking at the gem file, which is how Ruby handles inside Ruby dependencies. So I suspect that the uh, most of these are single ecosystems, and the same for counting up the dependencies. Uh, a number of these, it's really easy to do within one ecosystem. If you want to cross ecosystems, that's when you start pulling in these OWASP tools, for example. And there's other folks who do it too, not just OWASP, uh, who can try to track between ecosystems. But it's it's more challenging. Uh, Kate, did you is that yeah plausible summary? That's plausible. I'll I'll, I'll live with that. Yeah, I won't quibble. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question on the adoption of the metric, maybe not direct uh, related to this, like as we have proposed libears. So that metric is developed by someone. 
and as a kiosk how we adopt if somebody has already developed a metric and how we inculcate that in our community like okay we just write the same metric and refer it to the author or we've done it before of, yeah we did it met- with project velocity mm-hmm. if a if a metric falls in the wilderness and nobody's there to hear it did it really fall it's it's does the metric have utility right okay fine <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you, you, yeah. You said earlier something about hey, you know, it doesn't matter if it's useful or not. But I, I'm not sure I actually believe you. If I count, I mean, you can always make another metric. I counted up the number of E's in the source code. Uh, right. You know, it, it clearly vowels versus make consonants. Up, there we go. Clearly, you, you, I mean, you can make up metrics all day. You right. only want metrics that have some reasonable way to answer questions somebody's likely to care about. Yeah, and and I think Libyards do that. And I think this cross ecosystem question that you asked speaks to the implementation of Libyard calculation more than the idea of the metric, right? So there are are limits on the implementation, but the idea of the metric remains, I think it's, it's certainly not a terrible starting point. And looking at average Libyards, is not a terrible starting point. And I would think, um, like, I would want to know both the Libyers average, but I'd also want to know the versions behind the average. Like, those would be two different things. Yeah, I added on the bottom and VI, you know, some sort of sorted the, the ID, the worst ones. You know, give me, give me the top, mm-hmm. the, give me the 10 that are worst, sort them that way. And that way, you know, it give me an idea about uh, how bad things are. So number of dependencies, age of those version dependencies. I'm sure there's other things to measure, but certainly that gets you started. So Um, why don't I propose um, as we're approaching time that I'll start, start. This group probably gets here. We approach time, we never develop a metric, but we have great discussions. Well, (laughs) I'm actually, (laughs) I have, I have, two empty ah. metrics here and yeah. what I'll propose is that I can start kind of filling them out just a little bit based that we could discussion yeah that maybe we yeah, based on, could focus on these initiatives yeah and oftentimes in these working groups we do just spend a little bit of time working from a kind of rough document mm-hmm. spending uh, you know 10 or 15 minutes the second so document that, need uh, access to the the I'll view the document. This okay. Right. I'll, I'll take care of that. Yep. And, and there's a hint below, and I, I copied it up in A. You know, you can count the number of direct dependencies and total, including the transitive. You can also do that for just the runtime only set. And I do think that that's a value. Wait, say that again. I was doing. I was doing. Basically, the, the uh, a runtime only. You know, basically, tell me the um, runtime only subset. You know, you know. Basically, yeah. You know, the you know, we ha- tell me the that, number of dependencies. This ties to D. D. Yeah. Yeah. Run runtime is really a significant consideration for, right? Especially like automotive grade Linux or any kind of real time operating system. The runtime dependencies are particularly important. Right. So that's probably a filter. Mm-hmm. Right, because uh, you, know, it, you know, at least for most systems I've seen, there's a whole bunch of dependencies that are involved in the test infrastructure and so on that you don't, you're not going to use them in runtime. And so, you know, if you're worrying about security, for example, those aren't very important. You know, if I have a vulnerability in my test environment, it's all isolated. The test environment, it's never, it, you know, it's it's never under a situation where it's under attack. Right. Okay. Okay, I got it. All right. All right, well, that was freewheeling conversation, but yeah, <laughs> I think but... we've got some, some action here. Well, I think you, you at least there, there are, there may be better, but at least there are metrics one can devise. Now the question right. is, how to determine whether or not they are 
useful for some purposes, but that's right. You know, identifying what can be measured is, is a useful first step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So uh, the next meeting that we have would be uh, sometime in early December. And perhaps we can continue this discussion then. Um, Kate, Kate, is there a virtual version of the um, the compliance summit happening this year? Yeah, there is. Oh. Certainly, it's, um, could you send me a could you send me a link to that? Because I didn't yeah. I didn't get involved in the virtual version of it. Because sure uh, thing, no worries. Just a second, let me go. Just a second, we'll go grab it. Um, it feels like that. Like ordinarily, I'd be in Japan for that this time. Yeah, of I know. Me too. <laughs> Like I said, I, I, that's usually my Christmas shopping. It's not happening this year. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, really. Thank you. No, it's okay. Uh, just I'll, oh, you've got it. You've got it. Yep. Yeah, I, I clicked the link. I'll, I'll. I guess I have to request an invitation, mm -hmm. which doesn't need to be recorded here. We'll do that um, separately and. Yes. Yep. Bid you all adieu. Okay. Bid okay, you. and by the way, I. I've, I uh, threw in another metric into the hopper as uh, F, so you know, at least it's there for uh, discussion at some future date. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, that, that, thank guess, you. What I, guess who gets to uh, sit there and record her talk to, tonight or tomorrow? <laughs> 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 All right, well, everybody, please stay you know, safe. These, these virtual mm -hmm. conferences, I, I think they're three times your work, right? <laughs> yeah. You, some, prep, yeah. You, you prep your slides, you get that, you may have to record it twice for yourself. You submit it in, and then you have to listen to it yourself, talk it through and answer questions while it's happening. Yes. Like, oh, it's three times the effort. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is for the open compliance summit. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Gotcha. Okay. Yep. But thanks for the extra 10 minutes, guys. Sorry to continue talking. No, there hasn't been, actually, we're right at time now. Okay. Um, so Take we're, care. all right. You, you, you all as well. And, Bye, everybody. Um, Bye. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye.